for today's tutorial we're going to be making this gorgeous little rabbit and he has a little surprise because underneath when you open the cord underneath he stores candies and he's a lovely addition to like an Easter um, sort of basket I suppose but he's so sweet and I made quite a few of these so simple to make so let's have a look at the materials you're going to need you're going to need some double knit yarn I'm using quite a cheap value yarn and um, works really well I think it's an acrylic base you're going to need um, some sort of elastic cord and I've got this soft elastic cord that I bought um, when making masks so it's what I had left over a pom-pom maker um, some safety eyes and I also use a safety nose now if you want to make this more small child friendly then you can obviously embroider the eyes and the nose in but I really like using these um, safety eyes and I think it gives the rabbit a really cute little face. I've also got some ribbon for round the neck and obviously the tools we need are um, your simple yarn needles. Um, I have the Addy hook. Now I will be using the Addy king size, the 46 needle. Um, so let's go and have a look at how you make this. OK, so to do this, I'm going to use some waste yarn first and I'm going to cast on. So the way you do that, you find your first black needle and then you go backwards and forwards through the needles, weaving through. I like to do this slowly because of oh, well, I get I sometimes miss the stitch. So I do this a little bit slower than perhaps some of you do. And I like to use a contrasting colour, so the fact I'm actually knitting in white is brilliant, I can use any colour. Now, when you get to that needle again, put your yarn back into the yarn channel. And I'm going to now do about five rows of scrap yarn. I've actually done six rows. Now, I'm back at that first needle. I'm going to just let it register that row because I won't count the first row that I do. I'm now going to cut out, cut, I don't know, short piece of the, cut, the yarn. And then taking the yarn that I actually want to knit with, going into the same hook. I'm going to hold them both and I'm just very gently going to make sure that it catches. Then putting a little bit of tension onto that yarn, I'm very carefully going to do my first row. I never count this row. I always do one row as my cast on. Now I'm going to set my counter to zero. I need to do 35 rows for the bunny. So I'm going to do this now and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so you're just joining me at the last row. I'm on row 34. Just going into row 35. Okay, now what we will need to do is to finish this by leaving a bit of a tail. Which I'm going to do like that. And then I'm going to take the scrap yarn again and I'm just going to finish it off by doing about five or six rows and then I'll cast off. Okay, so that's my sixth row I think I did. And just cut off the yarn and pop it into the machine and then I'm just going to carefully turn this and my project will come away gently supporting it like this 
Now what you need to do is you're going to need to pull your project into a square. I'll do that and join you in a moment. OK, so I'm now just teasing this back into a square. And what I tend to do, I don't know how you all do this, but I do tend to leave my scrap yarn edges, sorry, the project yarn edges and the scrap yarn at the edge of where I am going to be sealing this. And I'm going to use a crochet hook and I'm going to seal together both ends of this. OK, so for this type of work, I do tend to use a four mil maybe four and a half a mil hook, it's up to you. Doesn't really matter, but I just feel more comfortable. So like I said before, I've got my working yarn there at the end and I'm going to start on the opposite end. And I'm basically going to take one hoop of your project and you can see why now we use the contrasting yarn. It works so nice to show you the stitches that you're going to want to use. So. In I go and I'm going to pull that through. Take the next piece, pull through, oops, and then back over to the other side, pull through, pull through, and you work all the way down, and this gives a really, really nice, neat edge. So I'll carry on so you can see how I do this. You can see the neat edge that it's making. It's a really fantastic way of finishing off projects. I tend to knit everything first and then sit, if I'm doing batches of this, sit in front of the television and just crochet along. Picking up all those stitches, making sure that I've got them all. Gets a little bit more tricky towards the end. Make sure I've got them all. And you'll see why I leave that tassel, that little working yarn to the last, because I use it to finish off my stitch. So I go through once and through twice and then pull through that yarn and it gives a quite a nice and neat knot at the end. Now you're going to have to do the other side, but you must make sure that you don't twist your project. So in order to do this, you can follow. So if you look at the V's, you can follow the stitches all the way along, just turning the project work, the tube all the way along so that you know that that. Making sure I've got it right that has got to be the end and luckily yep it's where my working yarn is coming out so make sure that's level and working yarn there and I'm just going to do the same again here then I'm going to take out the scrap yarn and you can unravel this it is a bit of an awkward one on one side works really well on the other but um, I just tend to pick it out and then you can use it again for your next part. OK, so I'll see you at the end when I've done both of those. OK, so I've taken off my scrap yarn. And you can see I've got this nice, neat square of yarn. So now what you need to do is I'm going to get my yarn needle and just take in the ends and just sandwich them between the two panels. Like that. And then 
this one. Pull that in between them. Right, now, the next bit, I am going to need some more white yarn. cut that piece off. Now for this you're going to separate it, you're going to sew a running stitch across the middle up to that point and down to here so you end up with the two pieces on one side, doesn't matter which side and I do this by folding it in half first to find my halfway line and just give it a finger press and it gives me a line to work on. So that's the first piece that I'm going to do. So just using my yarn needle now, I'm going to go this side and just back and forth all the way along that centre line. that just leave a tail at that side now pulling it back into shape what I'm going to do now is bring in the two corners so they meet these will become the ears and the head so I'm just going to again finger press them and using a running stitch out at the top like that you can see I'm starting to make a triangle and then I'm going to go from this point down to here again give myself a line to follow It's so simple to make and yet really effective, this bunny. Okay. Now I've got that, I hope you can see this. There is a triangle of running stitch that goes, I'll just move that round. It goes from here all the way along, up to this point and down to this. Now when you pull this, starts to gather and what you're looking for is a face and if I just fold that through you can see how it starts to create a little face now you're going to have to play around with this in order to get this sort of shape I do sew across here as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to model this I'm going to use a little bit of polyfill or hollow fiber toy fill you don't want to overdo that So I'm going to poke through my finger first and I'm just starting to look at this. These are the ears. So if I just poke my finger in, I think, yep, yeah, there's great for a nose. I'm just going to position that in. And this is why I like to use those artificial um, safety noses, you know. And then I'm going to put in the eyes. I have one there. And that's level one there am I happy with that yep I think so so now I'm going to put on the backs oops dropped one of those that's useful Is so fiddly. There we go. Right, so now I've got those on. I'm going back to pulling the two pieces. You can see there 
the face pulling those two pieces and just filling it with a little bit of toy stuffing and like I said you don't need too much of this what you're looking for is making the shape of that little face now when I'm happy with the amount of um, toy stuffing I've got in there I'm going to pull on these two pieces poking in the stuffing to make sure it stays in place like this don't worry about the shape of the face to start with because we're going to be altering that using our needle and then I'm going to tie a knot now I did see the pattern for this this is, I got this pattern by um, if you put into the internet um, creating a bunny from a square of fabric that's where I saw this and I thought this could be adjusted into a knitting pattern and when I did that I started to realize oh actually you can make this like a little candy store so that's how this pattern came about for me so there you go tied that in a knot and you can start to see the ears are already forming now the face is looking a bit um, out of shape if you compare it to this one and what I do is I use the thread and I shape the ears and I also shape the face. Now instead of using this large needle I probably will move to a thinner needle for my yarn and sometimes I use a darning needle as well I find that useful. Right so let's start to shape this so I'm going to first of all gather the ears and then I'll come onto the face afterwards. So there's the ears done. Now I'm going to start to shape this face. So going in with my needle and coming out just by one of the eyes. And back again. Just pulling it into a shape but not too aggressively and you can see that it'll start to form let's poke around with this moving the fiber so I've got these little cheeks and I'm really pleased with that I think that's a really cute little bunny face so I'm going to go back in now and up through the back of the head with the yarn not pulling it too tight again Remembering that if you pull too tight, the face will change shape again. Just making sure everything's ha I'm happy with everything. And then going to knot that go from the other bit of yarn like this. Again, being careful not to pull too tight like that. And yeah, happy with that. The little face is cute. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create the back and I'm just going to use a blanket stitch just going to come down the back to the point here and you don't sew this bit. This bit's going to be used, we're going to sew, sorry, with the elastic so that we can close that and open it to put our treats inside. Okay. This piece of yarn, we don't need that. Okay. 
pulling the two sides together so I can see where I've got to start. I always put a, a tight stitch in this bit first just to hold that head in place. Okay. And make sure you stay on one line of the V's all the way down. So I've not used a blanket stitch here. I've just gone in and out. It seemed to work better. So you can use a um, mattress stitch, anything really. Um, did you seal the back up? And then I'm going to finish it at this point at the end. Make sure that's secure. And then I'm just going to lose the tail in the main body. Like that. Okay, so you can see the basic shape now of the rabbit. Just fiddle around with the face a little bit more. Make sure I'm happy with that. And the ears. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a pom-pom for the tail and I'm also going to be sewing in some of the elastic. So I absolutely love these little pom-pom makers they make life so much easier and what I'm going to do is just thread through my yarn through the middle I'm sure somebody's done a how to use these video. They're just so fantastic. And I always do a knot where I twist in three times. One, two, three. And that just stops it actually unraveling. It's a really clever little hack somebody taught me. Right, so that's nice and tight. I'm just going to undo that now. And there's the little pom-pom. I'm just going to trim off some of those edges. Oops. Now you can trim it down as much as you want, but I quite like it. Nice and fluffy for this. So what I'm going to do now is use these two pieces and my crochet hook and I'm going to go up and take one piece and pull it through. Not working for me. Oops. Try again. And on the other side, you can see this, I'm grabbing both sides of this yarn, both ends, sorry. I've lost it again. Yeah. Try again. <laughs> it's fiddly. Because it's all white, so I'm losing my... There we go line of sight now you want that nice fluffy pom-pom just to cover the base here where it all finishes because that's where our bow will go eventually now I'm just going to knot off that pom-pom so it's so so easy to add there we go 
and I'm just going to cut those off nice and short okay so I've got to the point now where all I need to do is to put the elastic in and we're nearly finished and add a little bow and some candies now at Easter I made these and I used Easter eggs but at the moment I can't get a little net of Easter eggs and it is nearly Halloween so I've got eyes which is weird I know but just imagine that they're little Easter eggs um, and I'm going to be putting those in in a moment. So I'm going to use this elastic now. I'm not quite sure about the length that I'll need. Um, it's got to be big enough to go around there. And use my yarn needle. And I always start this at the tail. So I use the tail to cover everything. And what I'm going to do is just thread this through all the way around, in and out, quite simple. Just catching stitches because you're going to use it to gather it eventually. Okay. I'm going to do that all the way around. It's quite a simple adjustment I made to the pattern. Once I realised that you can knit a square, um, it was simple from there. Um, I've not seen anybody else do this yet. I have shown this on the internet as a picture that I, when I made it uh, about a year ago. Um, but I've never done a tutorial. This is my first tutorial. Um, there are several more coming up, well, quite a lot more. I've been using the Addy machine to make things that I haven't seen on the internet from tea cozies right the way through to um, different types of toys that I haven't seen anybody make yet. Um, as I like crochet, I've kind of changed patterns that I'd use in crochet into patterns that you can use on the knitting machines. So please, if you do like this um, tutorial, subscribe and like my video, please. And then you'll know when I've uploaded the next one which is a really lovely snowman and he's beautiful and I'll show you that um, in the next video. Okay so there we go and let's just put some chocolates in. You can fill it with anything, you could fill it with money I suppose if you're very generous. In goes the candy and then I'm just going to pull together this um, cord tie it into a bow. I found the bows worked best like that. I'm just going to trim off the bit that I don't need and then I'm going to just adjust that to make the body. There we go and I've got a little bit of blue ribbon which I'm going to add around the neck and at Easter I did do um, some really lovely um, Easter bunnies and I put um, little charms around the neck um, of an Easter bunny and that was really pretty. There we go, tie a little bow and there you have it, a little Easter bunny or a candy bunny, whatever you want to call it. If you've got a friend who likes rabbits, it makes a really nice little table favour. You can have them on the table. Look at that, so sweet. So I hope you've enjoyed it and please join me on the next video where, like I say, I'm going to make a gorgeous snowman. Um, he was lovely. I really love the snowman and he has a little hat and scarf as well. So I'll be showing you how to make all of those. Thank you very much for joining me. Hope you've enjoyed it. Take care. Bye bye.